Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R720 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on hard drives and solid state drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R720 server. Do us a favor, if you find this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. So this video is going to be focused on drives. We're going to cover uh, hard drives and solid state drives. Uh, we're going to cover um, all the different maxes as far as the speeds and the capacities. Uh, we're going to show you how to test your hard drives using Dell Diagnostics. And then we're going to show you a tool that we personally like called HD Sentinel that lets you see the power on hours and the health scores for your drives as well. So um, sometimes it's just a nice to use another tool outside of uh, Dell's Diagnostics to just do a uh, double test kind of to make sure your drives are good. So, all right, well, let's just hop into it. So there are uh, three types of drives that we're going to cover here, uh, SAS, SATA, and solid state. Um, with SAS, the max speeds that you're going to get, or really just cover all the speeds, uh, you can actually do a 7.2K, which is a, a, um, uh, a SAS that's more of um, like a 2 terabyte or 3 terabyte, uh, will be like a 7.2K. Um, you have the normal SASs, which are the 10 and 15K, um, and a lot of people like to use the 15K just because it's you know the fastest drive out there as far as the uh, the RPMs. I will say with the 15K, because these are mechanical devices, uh, the ball bearings will wear out on those 15K ones, uh, so definitely test the health scores, definitely test them with Dell Diag. Uh, those are the ones that are known the most for fallout, uh, just because of the bearings uh, will, will wear out. Uh, so that's one of the things I always tell people just to definitely check on uh, if you are getting 15K used, okay? Um, as far as the uh, max speeds for um, SATA, really you're looking at 7.2K. That's that's just kind of normal for SATA. Uh, there's some you know kind of specialty ones out there. You can get some uh, like 5.4. I think there's even some 10K out there. Um, but in general, what you're going to see the heart of SATA is going to be 7.2K. So that's what you'll see from us is 7.2K. Okay. Now, as far as the SSDs, uh, you can get three gigabit per second, or you can get um, six. Those are those are your options. Um, you can technically put 12 in, but it's going to it's only going to go up to six. So um, that is the uh, the speeds for the solid state drives. Okay. All right. Now let's uh, talk about the max capacities. Well, that depends if you're going to be using a 2.5 inch small form factor, or if you're going to be using a 3.5 inch large form factor. Well, we'll start with small form factors. So the small form factor with SAS, the max that you can get is 2.4 terabyte. With SATA, it's 2 terabyte. And with SSDs, it's 7.68 terabyte. So that's the max across each one of those with small form factor. So now let's talk about the large form factor. The large form factor, uh, the advantage is that you can get uh, very high end or high capacity drives uh, for much cheaper than the 2.5 inch um, and stuff them into an older box, which makes some of these older boxes great for storage. Uh, so you can actually get 16 terabytes with SAS on the large form factor. You can get 14 terabytes with SATA and you can get 7.68 terabytes, which is really just a 2.5 inch getting converted into a 3.5 inch uh, using the adapter. Um, and you can get that on the large form factor side. Okay. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, someone comes out and drops a comment down below that says that they're actually getting something a little bit higher. That's what we've personally put in and we've tested. Uh, but I'd love to hear if you've put in uh, 18 terabyte or something higher. Uh, definitely let us uh, know and put that in the comment section. Okay. All right. Well, now we'll actually go ahead and show you how to install them, which is really easy because it's a hot swap. Uh, so it's a very simple, just kind of uh, pop it in and out. Uh, but just in case someone wants to see that, and then we'll show you Dell Diag and we'll show you HD Sentinel. Let's get going. All right, so we are going to swap out the drives now. Uh, we're using the large form factor one for this, but it's the exact same if you're doing the hot, uh, the hot, uh, I'm sorry, the small form factor. These are hot swap, which means you can remove them while the server is on. Um, that is why it's called hot swap. And so it's just as simple as pushing the red button and it will come out and then pushing it back in. So again, it's just boom, pull it out slides in perfectly, connects perfectly. Uh, it's honestly one of the, the simplest uh, upgrades or installs for a replacement to do. Uh, again, I'll do it one more time just to show you how easy it is. It just slides in perfectly. And one of the things also I did want to note while we're uh, looking at the uh, the front here, you have bay 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, and that's your eight bay for your large form factor. Uh, and technically the other two 
are a small form factor and there's an 8 bay small form factor and a 16 bay small form factor. So those are your choices on the drives. Uh, and again, we'll do a whole different chassis video where we kind of highlight the differences between them. But since storage is one of the big differences, I wanted to uh, point that out on this video as well. So now we'll show you how to do Dell Diagnostics to test your drives and then we'll show you how to do HD Sentinel. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to go ahead and do is boot up your server and during post you want to go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side and then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen but you just want to go ahead and press yes and it'll take a little bit of a second to load but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So immediately, whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there's a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's going to be tested. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. One thing I do want to mention about Di Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue. Or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC. But you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And we actually have a video later on in the series that covers mass updates. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can, this can take a while. It can take, you know, maybe a low end of 20 minutes up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed. Uh, but if it has a check next to the test, like it does on the left-hand side for all of our items here, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else, and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to, one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has you know, been in use. 
and especially if you want to use this for a big enterprise system, you don't want to be using drives that have been, you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. Like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%, so all pretty good. When it comes to this drive's power on time, it has over 2,000 days. So this is probably something we would not use as it is, you know, has a couple years of use. But, you know, that's the beauty of this tool. You can, you can see this type of information and then you can decide on whether this is a drive that you want to use in your data center um, in a enterprise system. So I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com, sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.